G'day everyone, Dominic here again from Gimbal Productions and today I'm going to run you through this Back to the Future Part 2 style hover car effect. Now this tutorial is quite extensive, but I'm going to make sure I go in depth enough for you to follow along each step of the way. So let's get started. The first thing that we'll need is the footage. So I went outside and I just recorded this simple scene tilting down from the sky. So this is a very basic camera movement, but just enough for the camera to move from the sky more closely to the ground, quite slowly as well in a control camera movement. In After Effects, all I have to do is drag and drop my file into the timeline to create a new composition. I'm just going to alter my time code to start at zero if it's not already. And I'm also going to apply a basic color correction to my footage. This is important as I'll need to color correct my car model to match the footage anyway. So if you've shot on RAW like I have with my Blackmagic camera, I'm just going to apply a Lumetri color effect and then color grade my footage. I'm just going to move my playhead throughout my footage just to make sure the colors look okay in the way that I like them. Okay, that looks pretty good. The next thing I need to do is perform a camera track. So I can do this by right clicking my footage layer and then selecting track and stabilize and then go to track camera. This process might take a bit of time, but that gives me enough time to look for a car model to use for this effect. There are a bunch of different websites that you can download free 3D models from, but one of my favorite ones is Sketchfab. On this website, you can find and download free 3D models created by community members. So, as you can see here on my screen, I'm just scrolling through the Sketchfab website and to find a car model that I like. This is really handy as you might be able to find a car that matches one that you own in real life. So let's just say you wanted to do a futuristic takeoff shot with this car moving up into the sky. You can match your car with a 3D model. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna use one of my favorite car models of all time, the DeLorean DMC-12, of course, inspired by Back to the Future. Inside Sketchfab, I can look around and observe this model just to make sure everything looks okay. I can then download the 3D model underneath that. As you can see here, it is free to use and it can be used for commercial purposes. However, you just need to credit the author. You can then download this file and then unzip it to a designated folder on your computer. I would recommend downloading one of the auto-converted formats listed as part of these download options. The next step of this process requires the use of Blender. Now, if you haven't used Blender before, don't be alarmed. It is quite easy for this VFX tutorial. You can move around the scene by clicking this circle at the top right of your screen, and you can move left and right, up and down by clicking and dragging on this little hand icon. Change to object mode and just click on this cube and press delete on your keyboard. Okay, now all we have to do is go file, import, and then choose the file we downloaded off Sketchfab. Okay, so now my model is inside Blender. Right now it is quite large, but that's no issue. I can just press A on my keyboard, as well as the letter S to scale that down. Okay, this looks like a bit of a better size here. Okay, so now I can see that my model is floating above the X axis with a bit of a blank space underneath it. That's no issue. I can click on this button here to look at the left hand side view. I'm going to press A on my keyboard again and just move this object into the middle of the scene. You can find the move tool on the left hand side of your screen. Okay, I'm just going to line up this little orange dot here, maybe line the wheels up with that red line. Okay, there we go. Right now you might notice there is no textures on your model. That's just because we need to select the viewport shading option. Okay, so now I've clicked that all of my textures will now load in. Okay, it's quite a nice looking model. I'm quite pleased with this. However, it's not a high polygon model, which means it's not a ultra high definition model to use for like high end film or VFX work. But for our purposes today, low budget filmmaking, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gonna shift click on all of the tires and the, the tire centers and just press delete on my keyboard. So now I have a car that has no tires. I'm then going to go File, Export, Wavefront, 
or OBJ. I'm just going to name this DeLorean model without wheels and then save that. Moving back into After Effects now, once the tracking is complete, just scrub through your timeline just to check that these tracking points aren't moving wildly throughout your, your footage. Now we want to make sure we have a clean tracking data to pull from to make our 3D camera. Okay, so I'm just going to select this group of points in this tree here. I'm going to right click that and go create null and camera. Okay, so as you can see in my layers here, I've created a track null and a 3D tracker camera. Okay, so on the right hand side here, you can see what this has actually done. On that right hand side, you can see a box with a triangle poking out of it. And that's basically a recreation of our actual camera movement from real life. So After Effects has gone in and looked at all the footage and matched that camera perfectly. Okay, so this is gonna help us match our model and move it throughout our scene. The next thing that you need to do is create a solid layer and any color will work for this. I'm just gonna right click here and go new solid. Next, I'm going to apply a video copilot element 3D effect. Once that effect loads, the black solid will disappear. If I go into the effects tab, I can then choose scene setup. This is the UI for element 3D. At the top left, I can choose import object and find where I saved my blender OBJ file. So there we go, DeLorean without wheels. When this window pops up, just click OK and then your model will appear in the model viewer. If your model appears small, just click normalize size in the box on the right hand side. The next thing you might notice is that your model might not have all the textures loaded. Not a big issue as we can relink them from the Sketchfab folder that we downloaded previously. Look at the name of these spheres and these are basically the materials that came with the model. All we have to do is relink them with the folder that we downloaded. So I'm going to find that folder and as you can see here, we have a selection of different images to choose from. You want to make sure you choose the right image that matches the material name for that particular model. Right now, I'm not particularly sure what material goes with this particular object on this model. So I'm just going to cancel out of this and perhaps just go to one of these other spheres. Okay, I'm just going to do the body material as I saw that as one of the image files. I'm going to refine my textures folder and there we go, so the body base color. Next to that, you might find the normal map version of that texture. So I'll load the base color into the diffuse section and then underneath the normal bump, I will choose that normal image layer. That's gonna create a bit more of a depth to our textures. Okay, I'm just gonna cycle through all of these textures here and just relink them to that textures folder. Of course, making sure I'm choosing the right, the right image files and then choosing the normal bumps that go with that. More often than not, you'll find that these image files actually matches the name of those spheres inside Element 3D. However, some of these image files actually work for multiple of those spheres. Just try your best here and try and match it as close as possible. You might run into a situation where a material does not have an image file to go alongside that, like the glass in this model. But what I can do is choose a diffuse color. I can alter the glossiness of that material. And because it's a window, I'm gonna make the opacity a bit more see-through as well as turn up my reflectivity of that material. I'm now just gonna quickly cycle back through the textures of the car I've just relinked and turn up the reflectivity where that particular car model would have reflections. So in the case of the DeLorean is a stainless steel car. So you would have some reflections off that surface. I'm just gonna quickly cycle through the rest of this process because it might take a bit of time. So bear with me. Okay, so now my textures have all been relinked. I can then press the okay at the top right hand side of element 3D. Okay, so right now my car model is quite small in comparison to the rest of the footage. So I can go back into scene setup and then just bring up the size of my model once again. I'm also gonna turn my model around 
just so it sort of matches the angle and perspective that I wanted my model to appear like in the sky. Okay, there we go. What I'm going to do now is just move forward on my timeline to where I want my car to end up floating in my scene. So I'm just gonna drag my playhead here and I think around the 12 second mark, I'm gonna have my car floating in that particular spot. So what I'm going to do is just turn on my group one settings here and I'm going to expand the particle replicator and rotation options. At this time, I'm going to set a keyframe value for all of those particular options. I can then click and drag on these values to align the car model into my scene. Now this might take a bit of time, but if you want to make your car model bigger, just move it forward on the Z axis. If you want it higher in your scene, move it up on the Y axis, side to side on the X axis, of course, and just line up the rotation of the model to fit it as if it was floating in that space. So this comes down to a bit of personal preference. Just find the right values that work for your particular footage. Okay, so this is what my model ended up looking like. And I'm just going to go back to the first frame of my footage and move my car upwards on the Y axis. So that way it looks like it's coming down from the sky. I'm also going to change the Y rotation just to make it look like the car is turning as it comes for a landing. So as you can see here, I can just click and drag on this value, line it up and then drag it upwards on that Y axis. I'm going to go into my keyframes here and just use a ease in and ease out value uh, transition. That way it looks like the car is coming in softly moving from the top of the screen down to the bottom. This is going to help sell the effect of a floating hover car and making it look like it's softly moving from the sky down towards the ground. Okay, once all those changes have been made, this is what the effect looks like. So I'm actually quite pleased with how this is looking at this particular moment. There are a few texture changes I might make, especially underneath the car to make it a bit darker, but I'm gonna cover that very shortly. The next thing that you want to do is turn on the particle look options and then find the particle rotation settings. I'm going to alt click on these stopwatches and type in a wiggle command. So I'm going to type wiggle in brackets one comma three and I'm going to do the same thing for each of the X, Y and Z values. What this is going to do is create a floatiness effect as the car rocks from side to side and back and forward on a randomized way. This is going to create a more of a realistic floatiness effect as the car comes down to a landing point. We want to try and make this car look as realistic as possible, but right now it's not looking all too great. I'm going to right click in my timeline here and create a new point light. I'm going to choose a color similar to that of the sky, just because I think the shininess of the car would reflect that in its lighting off the surface of the car. And I'm going to move that position of that light upwards into the sky where the sun would have been. Now I'm looking at the shadows in this particular scene. The lighting would be coming from the right hand side, as you can see as the shadows of the trees on the, on the ground there. And I'm going to turn my intensity of that light upwards. As you can see here, is creating a brighter effect on that side of the car. I'm quite happy with that final placement of my light and I'm just gonna create a keyframe for those particular values. Underneath the render settings of the Element 3D effects layer, we can turn on ambient occlusion. What this is going to do is create a effect where if the light isn't hitting a particular surface, it's gonna create a darker shadow. As you can see on my 3D model here, if I turn up these values of the intensity, as well as the gamma, the radius, etc., that's gonna create a darker look of those shadows in those places where the light wouldn't actually be hitting. This goes a long way for selling a realistic car effect. To continue to make this look more realistic, 
I'm going to now duplicate my footage layer and delete the 3D tracker effect from that duplicated file. I'm then going to pre-compose that layer and call it environment. I'm now going to jump back into my element 3D settings. And as you can see underneath custom layers, I'm able to choose this pre-composed footage and I can map that as an environment layer for my reflections on the car. So once I've chosen that, I can go back into scene setup. Now any surface that would be reflective, I'm able to choose that particular texture and underneath reflectivity, I can choose that custom layer. So I'm just gonna change a few of these settings here just to make the reflection look a bit more brighter or more saturated. I like to do a bit more of a contrasted image in my reflections as it creates a more uh, visualized effect. And you can see it a bit more clearly from my personal experience anyway. So as you can see here, I'm just changing a few settings for any texture on the car that would have a reflective surface. I would recommend going back through your footage just to make sure all the textures look okay as the car moves throughout the scene. Maybe you need to darken a few textures or maybe you need to change any of those reflective values. But right now my car looks pretty good and I'm quite happy with this. If you haven't done so already, turn on the motion blur switch that's found next to your layer. As you can see here, as the car moves throughout the scene, this is gonna create a more realistic movement of our 3D model in space to sort of match what a real camera would look like if it actually had recorded that. I'm also going to add a fast box blur onto my Element 3D layer. So I did shoot this footage with a quite high quality and sharp lens. However, there are some softness that occurs in the details of the image only because the light is transferring through different glass elements. So if we kept our 3D model looking ultra sharp and crisp, it's not going to match our original footage. So I'm gonna match that softness. It's only very slightly with the background footage and making it look a bit more realistic as if the camera had shot that. Under render settings in the element 3D effect, I can even choose the exposure and gamma values for this model basically color correcting it to match the lighting and the shadows of our particular scene. So I'm just gonna slide these values around until I find a look that matches the car nicely into the footage. So I'm quite happy with this. The shadows look good, the darks look quite punchy, and it matches quite well into my scene. I'm just gonna go back into scene setup really quick. Remember how we deleted the wheels that came with our car model? Well now I'm gonna import a higher polygon count version of those wheels. You can download that similarly off Sketchfab or any other of those 3D model websites. So I've just particularly found these DeLorean wheels and I'm just gonna line them up into my scene to match the look and the location of them onto my car model. The reason why I'm using a separately downloaded wheel object file is because it has a higher polygon count. The wheels that came with the original model had a sort of jagged look around the edge of the wheel, which doesn't look realistic when put into a scene. So that's why I've downloaded these higher polygon count models of these DeLorean tires. Any tire seems to work, so don't stress too much about your particular car tire model. Of course, if you're trying to make it more realistic, find one that matches what the actual car had. Okay, so I've just put this car, the wheel here, and I'm just gonna change these material options just to match the colors of the original car. Just change the reflectivity to make it not look as shiny. I'm gonna add a reflection into that. I'm also gonna change the glossiness of the tire to make it not as shiny. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna move around my car model now just to further rotate my wheels to make them look like they're facing forwards. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Matches what the original car looked like. Now I can rotate my wheels to create that Back to the Future style tilted wheel effect. I'm just gonna move around my car model here and just check that the 3D models aren't clipping into each other. We want the effect to look as realistic as possible. 
So just make sure your 3D models aren't intersecting because obviously that's not realistic and is a sign of bad VFX work. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my rotation tools which is found alongside the bottom of this 3D object viewer and the move tool just to maneuver my wheel inside that wheel well. I'm using the interior of that wheel chassis, so that wheel object there, just to line up where my wheel will locate into. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, and I can always change where that wheel is located. In the object list, I can right click and duplicate the wheel object and move it to the back. I'm just gonna maneuver my wheels into the back wheel well. The back wheel well is a bit larger, so my wheel size can be a bit larger as well. So I can use the scale tool to scale up that wheel. Again, I'm just gonna maneuver around my scene, clicking and dragging on my Element 3D object viewer, just to check that it's looking quite okay. So I'll speed up this process as I do the other wheels, and this is what my final result looks like. Okay, I'm gonna press okay, and now my wheels are located in my scene, properly onto my car model. That looks quite good to me. Again, it's gonna scrub through my footage just to check if everything looks okay. All right, so there are a few positional issues there. It doesn't look quite right. So I'm just gonna go back into the, the scene editor here and just maneuver those tires. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna press okay. There we go, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, this next step is not particularly required. However, I do like the effect that it gives off. I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer and create a heat wave effect using this universe plugin. I'm gonna add a flow direction that goes downwards and a flow speed that matches almost a fumigating look as if the car is being magnetically lifted off the ground. It just creates this flowing effect that makes the car look like it's actually giving off this energy, making it fly in the sky. Okay, once I'm happy with my filter there, I'm gonna create a little masked off area where that effect will be applied to. Basically, what I'm going to do is just keyframe the position of this particular mask, moving downwards as the car moves downwards. I'm gonna turn up my edge featherness of that mask as well to create a soft effect. So as you can see here, it does create that sort of magnetic propulsion effect as if the car is giving off that energy which makes it fly. Again, it's not found inside the Back to the Future movies, however, it just does sell that effect. Also to match my footage a bit more, as you can see in the background of my footage layer here, there is a bit of grain found in the details. So I'm gonna add a noise and grain effect. I'm gonna add grain and I'm gonna add a color grain to my footage. So I'm gonna try and match my footage to the background as much as possible, selecting final output to see what that looks like. I'm gonna add an intensity which matches the background footage. I'm just gonna switch back over to the quarter resolution just because it goes a bit faster. I'm gonna change the intensity of my grain. Okay, I reckon around 0.3 Three will do, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I'm also gonna add the color and turn up the saturation quite a bit. Okay, I'm quite liking what that looks like. I'm gonna switch back into the full, full resolution there just to see what it looks like in full HD. Okay, it looks pretty good to me. It matches quite well with the original footage. Okay, the next step to make this look a bit more realistic is going back into my Element 3D layer and just adjusting those gamma and exposure values once again to create that look that I like. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back through my timeline, just see if everything looks okay. And everything does, I'm actually quite happy how this is looking at the moment. But there's a few more things we might wanna do. The biggest one, of course, is adding a shadow to our footage. I'm just gonna right click and add a new solid. I'm gonna make it a 3D layer. So I'm gonna right click that layer and make it a 3D layer. And just rotate it to match the sort of perspective of the ground. So I'm using my rotation tools here. 
I'm just gonna drag and rotate it to make it fit over my scene where the ground is. Try and match this as best as possible, match the perspective of the ground because it's gonna make a more realistic shadow. Okay, as I scrub through my timeline here, you can see that the black solid is locked to that particular area of the ground. I wanna make a quick mask, just quickly clicking around a sort of rounded rectangle effect with my pen tool. There we go. And I'll just speed up this process so you can see what my final mask looks like. I'm just changing those edges of that mask there, maybe adding a bit of a rounded look to the edge to make it look like the tires are protruding out of the shadow. Okay, there we go. Again, it's just trying to match the scene as much as possible. So I'm just gonna rotate the shadow perspective, making it sort of match what the shadow would look like realistically on the ground. We know that the sun is coming from the right hand side because of the shadows in the scene. And we also know the color of those shadows as well. I'm gonna go down into my opacity and just change it to where it looks like similar to that of the shadows around it. I'm also gonna add a feather to that mask to make it a bit softer around those edges. And that looks pretty good to me. All right, I'm just gonna add a few keyframes there for those masks paths. Okay, everything looks pretty solid to me. I wanna add positional keyframes as well as rotational keyframes as well. But I'm gonna alt click on the Z rotation and add a wiggle value of wiggle in brackets one comma five. Because the car model has that wiggle effect, which makes the floatiness effect look more realistic, I needed to add that wiggle effect onto the shadow to create that randomized movement as well. I'm also going to do the same thing, but to the X rotation. So I'm gonna add a wiggle effect in brackets one comma six. Play around with that depending on your footage. I'm gonna scrub back through my timeline and just see how that looks. I'm gonna add positional keyframes. Of course, when the car comes down to a stop, that's when the position will have locked into that particular spot. But as the car goes upwards into the air, the shadow obviously would move outwards, of course, because of the sun's placement. So I'm gonna add positional keyframes just to try and match where the angle of the sun and the shadow would cause it to move in my scene. I'll speed up this process. Maybe just expand my mask as well. And there we go. Once I'm happy with my shadows, I'm just gonna go into my compositional settings and change my shutter angle, which of course affects my motion blur values. So as you can see on my car model here, the higher the shutter angle is, the more of a motion blur effect is applied onto your footage. And there we go, we've created ourselves a Back to the Future Part 2 style hover car effect. Now with more time and dedication put in, you can probably create a really realistic looking hover car, but this is pretty good for what it's worth. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.